Okay, so here we go. You can see I've got it broken up into um, the tree already, and I, I've got it broken up as people who are men who are active, and then the D stands for men who have diabetes. So therefore, um, the A prime would be men who are not active, D prime are men who are did not have diabetes. So it's asking, what is the probability that a middle-aged man with diabetes uh, is very active? So they're telling you they've got diabetes. What's the likelihood that he's active? Um, so let's let's go ahead and fill some of this in here now. So let me get this out of here. Whoops. All right, so um, you can see from right here, they assume that one-fifth of all middle-aged men are very active. Oop, I apologize. I realize I'm not quite on the screen. Let's see if that helps. I'll have to just remember to stay in. My, my window's not quite big enough. Um, okay, so what's the probability that a um, man is active given that he has diabetes? So you can see, assume that one-fifth of all middle-aged men are active. So therefore, one-fifth is active, which means four-fifths are not active. Um, so now we got to fill out, figure out the diabetes part, diabetes part, and this is usually where students have a hard time. Um, they also say it is also found that men who were very active were a third as a third as likely to develop diabetes as those compared to who are sedentary. So here's how I like to do it: I just say x. Whatever the probability is here, these guys were one third as likely. So one third x. So now we're ready to start filling in our table, and you'll see why this is so cool. Um, so we say, all right, which branches do we want to be in? We know it's a given that they have diabetes, so we're either in this branch or this branch, so these branches are dead to us. We don't need them. Go away, go away. All right, so now we just use our Bayes theorem, which says the probability of A given D is equal to, all right, so now the desired branch would be the one that passes through A, so there's our desired branch, so that's our numerator, desired outcomes, so one-fifth times one-third x. Now our denominator, again, is that same branch, one-fifth times one-third x plus, um, but now we want the undesired branch, so that's going to be down here. Doo -doo -doo -doo. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and write that down, whoops, right down here, so that's four-fifths times x. Now the kind of neat thing here is if you just use a tiny bit of algebra, you will see that we can factor an x out of the numerator, leaving us with one-third times one-fifth over, and then the denominator, factor out an x down there too, which would give us one-third times one-fifth plus four-fifths, um, and then we factor an x out of all that. There we go. So now, the neato burrito part, these x's just divide. They divide to 1. So they're just 1. So now, that the cool thing is, it didn't matter what the probability of a guy having diabetes was. It's always constant. It's always x. Um, so it just one of them was x, the other was one third of them. Now we can end up solving this problem. Um, so this problem usually also means the student's going to ask me about, uh, it, this is not. This is problem number eight in the in our homework assignment. So usually whenever a student asks me about number eight, they also ask me about number nine. It's the same idea. So I'm not gonna make a video for number nine. Just think about, all right, I don't know what it is, so I'll just call it X and then come up with the relationship to compare it to the other one. Okay, good luck.